you know what I mean? I'm wondering what. You go back to the back yard. It's supposed to go all the way out. To spray out, yes. Over time, just oh, silk, silk coverage. It's going in between her house, so it's kind of seeming like the water it is yes because of the uh, land actually that we put yeah, a think we should fix it because water doesn't stop flowing it'll be under the ground and it'll be creating a ditch under the ground and then the ground will take it not the way it's engineered it'll come out of the drain ditch into a uh, collector and then go into the the uh, cement uh, oh, swell yeah. what we call it so what i'm talking about right now if you don't fix it i promise that water is traveling under the ground oh i agree I agree. That's why the big fence is up. Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's why we need to do something. Yeah, I agree. Don't it's going to ruin my foundation. I don't, we should be. We should definitely. Yeah, I just. I, but I brought this forward so you you know what's going on, and also I need your permission to put it out for bid. You know, I get flooded every rain, and I can't do nothing because my state is used to it. That's true. Yeah. So any, but thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any other discussion? My only questions are. Uh, it's about Lynn's engineering, actually. Yeah. They uh, wrote this up. They want to handle the bids, and they want to bid. Is that legal? No, they don't bid. They'll handle the bid process. Right. And they, they don't want to put a bid in to do the work. No, the contractors wrote that. They handle the bid process. Okay. We've already paid them for the engineering study. I could have sworn in his letter it said that he wanted to bid on the job, too. Maybe he, he's not a general contractor. I mean, so that's my no, that would be not good. That was my only problem. I didn't see the letter. I got it here. On the back. So yeah. limited engineering will assist in the bidding process of no additional cost to the city. Upon city council approval, we will place this project out for bid and assist with the analysis of the bid. I was thinking it was up in the top part, but I could have been reading the wrong thing. Okay, well, let's go then. No, he's not going to bid on the project, is he? No. That's yeah, that was the only thing that caught my mind. That would, that would be. No. Anyway, uh, any further discussion? If not, uh, I'd entertain a motion to allow the city to go forward with the bid process on that motion. project. So, a motion. We have a second? Second. We have a second. Roll call, please. Mr. McMinn. Yes. Councilmember Shepron. Yes. Councilmember Rummel. Yes. Councilmember Harbor. Yes. Councilmember Hafner. Yes. Motion carries, and we'll get started on that right away. Next up on the agenda is. Declaring a vacant seat uh, for the uh, Planning Commission. By ordinance, uh, whenever there's a vacancy on the Planning Commission, uh, I bring the nomination to the Council for Council uh, approval. There is no, unlike City Council uh, replacing them, there's no really state law on it that's in our ordinance. Uh, we did a couple changes to the uh, ordinance this evening, which allows a better control over it. Uh, what I'd like to do is set a date and time for nominations to be turned into my office and then at the next meeting I'll bring my recommendations to you and the individuals and we'll uh, have a good deal and I, I suggest May or April 12th at noon and we'll advertise this for everybody you'll have to live in the city limits but you can be in any committee ward it doesn't really it doesn't matter on this you just have to be a city uh, resident uh, it'll be a simple application just put your name in basically there's no requirements but I'll interview each of the uh, each of the individuals and I'll come back to the council next month with my recommendation. So with that, uh, I entertain a motion to set the uh, date and time for nominations on April 12th at noon. Motion. Okay. Okay, motion with a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Council before you also is my uh, State of the City report. Uh, that's available for you to read. It'll be posted on, on uh, the web tomorrow. For everybody read that by state law that has been provided to you with the finance and also. Next up is our my mayor's report. Highway 367-319 intersection. 
uh, finally is that if you notice a lot of uh, markings out there that project should get started soon and if so it should be done by this by this uh by this year we hope it's only been 12 years in the making we did have to split three hundred six thousand dollars with the county but the county graciously uh, paid that for us split it with us the uh, starts three with the safe browser school uh, phase three uh, we're waiting for our dot they're updating it's been five years since 2015 since it was awarded they requested a new updated estimate on the project so we'll wait to see how that comes through before we can put that out for bid. the arkansas economic development grant removed the 17 homes off the sewer system uh, yesterday the first bid announcement went into the paper it'll run for two weeks and then we'll have a bid opening and go from there that that project should start this year and be ready bob at the end of the year hopefully maybe we'll live long enough for the good things well i hope you live long without the good i appreciate you uh your patience uh, bob is highly affected that uh, only 27 years in the yes ma'am <laughs> the arkansas parks and rec uh, uh, tourism grant request 50 50 match uh, we've had two bid openings on that uh, and if any of you have tried to buy building material it's skyrocketed and so those both came in too high. We got back with a grantee and, and we're going to rebid it at the concession stand only uh, with the monies that were provided and then come back to the Arkansas Parks and Tourism and request more funds for the additional portions of the uh, park project. So instead of doing all in one uh, project, we'll have to break it up, but we're still pressing forward on that. The City Hall, City Hall, our regional pedestrian bike trails open. Uh, we did get $200,000 awarded by Metro Plan to Cabot Austin Ward and Lionel County for the engineering study for that. Uh, we There's a $50,000 match on that that we'll have to end up paying that we've talked about before. We have paid our 10% of that already. So that study will go forward. I mentioned four art outlet projects, Street Aid Committee uh, submitted a package for us to the state uh, street aid and it was awarded. An overlay project within the city overlaying several streets. You'll notice, Council, on the streets, we're also going to take the time now to replace the culverts on those streets if they need to be replaced instead of getting an overlay and then cutting the brand new asphalt later on and put the culverts in. We're going to go ahead and be proactive to move culverts under where we, where we can, and uh, that way we don't have to do that later on. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do. The Willard and Geraldine vacuum project to take another 64 houses off of, of uh, vacuum. I may be wrong on the number, but it's quite a few. Pending holding this, uh, waiting this information from the engineer or the Department of Health. Like I told you last year in December, we applied for and got a loan, got a grant to give the first electric to study and then design a fiber optics deployment in the city. Litter Communications, I had a conversation with them this past week. They are going to do a study also. They're going to uh, work toward getting fiber optics in the city. So what you're potentially going to have is Sun Lake, First Electric Fiber Optics, Litter Communications Fiber Optics, and in some places, Century Tail Fiber Optics over in Huntington area. So the internet, TV, phone service should get better for all of us and have us more options. And they'll fight. Pardon me? They'll fight to give us better service. That's yeah. true. Uh, we did a, a traffic study on North Street some time ago, and uh, March 16th on Monday, we we're going to put out a stop sign at the intersection of 3rd and Cross on North Street to help curtail some of the speeding on that street. Uh, it's a good stopping point uh, for folks and it'll keep. Is this where that Y, funny Y is? Because I thought there were supposed to be a stop sign there. There's not. There has never been a stop sign there. For, for third and cross, yes, but not for north. But we're putting them on north, so we'll do that. I know that was somebody's complaint. Nobody stopped on the street. And we're, we're taking care of that. The census 2020, uh, now the expected release date is late summer. Um, I still think, you know, we're going to have about 6,000 residents, I hope. Redistricting will follow, maybe, and I'll talk about that later. I've already contacted Metro Plan and, and we don't agree with them. They'll help us do the redistricting. What that is, redistricting the, the voting wards that we currently have. With the shift in the population to the south and Huntington and, 
and uh, those subdivisions down there, more likely the voting wards will shift down because you try to balance out the, the population for each ward. You all will get the opportunity to approve that. That's, that'll be part of your responsibility. Maybe. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. Um, Snowzilla, <laughs> the 100 year storm, I think we did a great job. Uh, we had some issues with, with plow breaking down and breaking. They re welded it six times in two days or two days, whatever it was. Um, we are going to work on a snow removal plan. We did good. But we're going to work on a snow removal plan that definitively outlines what priorities are, what intersections of priorities are, where we need to concentrate first. I think they did a great job, but I like to have it in writing. And so we're going to, we're going to do that. Here we are in not just the future, buy a new plow, a new spreader. Uh, they are old, they are out of date, they are wore out. Uh, but we're still going to keep the old plow on one of the dumpsters. We're going to put a new plow on a new truck that the street department's getting. And so eventually, by next winter, we'll have two plows available for the city, which will help also. COVID 19 update March 31st, the governor is expected to lift the mask mandate. If he does, then we will open up the city's facilities uh, according to guidelines, depending on what. Department of Health puts out a municipal league. Um, all city employees are now eligible for COVID-19 shots. It's not mandatory. I won't make it mandatory. But I encourage, I encourage each one of you, and you all are, are in that same category. And I, I sent the information out to you. Get your shot. I would highly encourage. Uh, I did. I had mine, and arm was sore. Got a headache on the second one. But other than that, that was fine. The federal COVID relief bill just Got an email this afternoon on this. There's $350 billion available in that bill for infrastructure needs for water and wastewater and broadband. Broadband has been taken care of by Ritter and First Electric, so I don't think I have to worry about that. But I may try to use some funds if, uh, if we have an opportunity to make a grant, grant request or whatever to uh, get radio read meters. Uh, I have an engineering study done, being done right now to engineer out how we would go about getting radio read meters. When that's done, we will go out for a request for proposal with various uh, radio read meter companies and see what the cost is going to be. We need that available to us because when these funds and these projects come down, it may be fast uh, lightning as far as when we have to turn in. We get these you know, kind of shovel ready, ready to turn in. Hopefully we can get some of these funds to help offset the cost of this probably $1.5 million project. So legislative action affecting ward. Senate Bill 208 is a bill that's probably going to pass. And what this does, it codifies the meetings of council members and quorum court members. Right now, if you have a meeting and you talk about city business electronically or in person or whatever, it's a violation of the FOIA Act. And if somebody wants to make a complaint, you could be charged and they might have to pay a fine. Senator thinks we're going to have a codified, make it a criminal. If he does, and if it goes as it's written right now, if two council members or me and a council member get together and speak of city council or of council city issues uh, and not in the public forum, and somebody finds out, somebody turns them in, they could be criminal liable for that. Criminal charges. Foreign court members also. It doesn't apply to the state legislator, it just applies to the foreign court and the uh, city council. And this is backed by the uh, Municipal League. Another bill that's backed by the Municipal League is the Senate Bill 386, which is a water operation rate study advisory bill. I know I passed out information uh, to the council on this, and this is going to pass. Uh, what this will do will uh, force every city, every water entity, to have a rate study at least every five years, which is fine. should be done anyway. The problem with this is the bill says if whatever rate that uh, rate study determines, you have to implement that year. Unless it's over 50%, then you can spread it out over two years. My argument then was let's spread it out over three or four years instead of uh, right now. But as it is, it's going to go in right now. This also requires us in particular because if you have over 40% of your water customers who live outside the city limits, you are required to create an advisory council. Council will determine 
what the term limits are, how many is on the board, and what their mission is. But we have to create an advisory committee. And two of the people have to be from outside the city limits, but within our water district. Um, I argued that one, said it should be council's responsibility to make that determination whether we need it or not, local control, but it's going to fly. It's going to go through, and it's going to be something we'll have to deal with when it comes about. Uh, so they, those things are coming. Uh, redistricting, Senate Bill 452. There's a bill out there that take redistricting out of your hands and put it in the hands of the uh, County Election Commission. County Election Commission does the redistricting for the county. The cities always did theirs because of, again, local control. We know our population. We know our, our citizens. We know best. This will take it out of our hands. And as Municipal League said, if this passes, we are going to wash our hands totally clean of this because if you don't redistrict properly and without due process and due diligence, you could bring lawsuit because of violation of the Voter uh, Act or some other uh, group of people who feel they were uh, discriminated against, however you uh, redistrict. Not saying it would happen in Ward, we don't have that much diversity, but it does happen in other cities and it could be a problem. If that happens and this law passes, it's all on the state, all on, on the county, excuse county. And I'm not sure the county Election Commission wants that for the county judge wants to expend the funds it would take to do it properly, but that may work. House Bill 1252 failed in committee, but if it had passed, um, we would have had run our next elections as partisan, meaning you'd have to declare if you're a Republican or Democrat or Independent or Green Party or whatever and pay the fees, the filing fees associated with that. That failed in committee. It was argued against by a lot of folks and, and me included. At the city level, it doesn't take, you, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, your potholes got to get filled, the potholes got to get filled. But at the upper levels, state the you need to know what party they're affiliated with. At the local level, we do things, um, we might do things that are against the Republican feelings or the Democratic feelings, but we do it for the betterment of our, our citizens, regardless. So that has failed the committee. Facebook discussion. I, I provided the, the, y'all with some stats, um, especially concerned citizens of war in Austin. There's 9.5 million. This is just a study I did. Uh, Ask Jamie to start uh, recording some names and just see where people live. Because I was curious about the percentage of people who are on that committee. There's 9.5 thousand, but we don't have that many citizens in our city, men, women, and ch children. She uh, recorded uh, 1155 names, and we looked at those, and 9% live in board, we could tell. These are just estimates and not scientific at all. 6% live in Austin, so they could live in Ward 2, which is an Austin address, and 85% live elsewhere, or we couldn't determine where they live. We did bounce 4 and 65 names against water, board water accounts. Only 11% were getting board water, 89% were not. The point of that is, when you're doing business on Facebook, watch it because people uh, uh, are saying things and they don't, don't even live in the city and creating problems and discussion. You know, positive discussion is fine, but some of the things that y'all read and I read are just, they're just trying to make trouble. And so I'd caution on, um, you know, if that works out, that's about a thousand people. On Facebook, that might be ward residents of a population of over 6,000 that you all ultimately uh, represent. So, I caution you what you discuss on Facebook, and I also caution you about being negative on Facebook toward the city. And, Ms. Shelton, I'm going to talk to you directly. Some of your postings that you put on Facebook, there was a posting of somebody asking about moving to the city, and you quite frankly, talk bad about the city and about some past deeds really put the city in a negative light. Recently, there was a posting you did about our police officers and their driving. It was just negative. And Chateau, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't think you're a good representation to the city sitting on city council. Now, I cannot do anything about you sitting on city council. You were elected. And I hope that you do what's right for the city, and I think you do something. Things that you've been posting on, on, on Facebook, I 
I'm just not good representation of the city. And with that, I want to remove you from the committee chair of the uh, garden committee. I'll remove you from the committee. Now that leaves some others. Anybody want to step up and be that chairperson? I guess I can. I can do that. Otherwise, I just just ban that committee. Hearing no one stepping up, I will disband that committee. If that discussion comes up some other time, we'll talk about it. But um, while it is absolutely 100%, you're right, and you're right, anybody on, on Facebook to post whatever. The negative stuff that's sometimes posted is bad for the city. And coming from one of our elected officials, I just, I just find it I don't know. I don't know what the words are. But see, I thought I'd, I'd ask you not to do that. And I think that's your request, but I think it's my right to be able to. Yes, if it wasn't for the page, if it wasn't for the group, I would not have even considered running for this position. But I think it's a great outlet, uh, a good way to get feedback from people here because they do interact there because it is easier than coming to these meetings that are not advertised except for how? Facebook. I don't disagree with you on that. And you absolutely have the right to, to say whatever you want to on Facebook. Yes. Well, my point is she's at least being honest about her opinion. Sure. She could have easily had her husband say that or her friend say that. Oh, I agree with that. And okay. so, I mean, at but least as, she's giving. But as an elected official, to bring positive light to the city, not negative light to the city. Oh, we have problems. Heck yeah. We have lots of problems. We're trying to fix them. Do what we can. That's my mayor's report for this month. Do we have any public input? Do we have any? Anybody sign it back there? Oh, yes. I do have orders. Okay, we do. Robert, Robert. Come on up, sir. You want to step up? What I'd like to do is actually introduce yourself and Per ordinance or per resolution, uh, you have three minutes, sir. Mm -hmm. Roughly, I mean, but uh, floor is yours, sir. All right, my name is Robert Davidson. I live at 25 Lankford Street. Yes, sir. I know you know what well, I've just spoke with you on, on yes, sir. Times. Um, I have a, a letter here. This is every single person on my street. I type this out, I let them read it. I didn't force anybody if you want it, you know, to read it. Oh, we'll need it for a record, but oh, yes. I said, I'll, I have to make a copy of it. Um, okay. we're, we're still having the issue with the car yes. uh, and his dad. I went down there as a adult, as a father, to talk to him. All he wanted to do was fight me. I've, I've did every. Or, what Can you? Uh, uh, there's yeah, uh, on Langford probably... Street. Okay. Yeah. On Langford Street, there's an orange Camaro. Um, that is a, he's 18 years old now. And his dad also lives there. They come up and down our street. By the time they get, we have one speed bump, right? As soon as they hit that speed bump, they act like it's a, you know, like a little car that got shot out of a rocket. Is that what I hear? Yes, ma'am. You heard it. You heard a few, a few minutes ago during this meeting, that loud noise, that was his dad. We had an instant Sunday where Lieutenant Sims and another officer came out because 911 was called because he barreled through the school kids as they were getting off the bus. I have done every single avenue that I have been requested. I came and spoke with Lieutenant Sims. He helped me the best he could. But out of 24 times that the Ward Police, the Austin Police, and Lono has been to my house, they were able to produce three police reports. So I did the affidavit that I was requested to do. I got a letter from Lacey, is that his name? Chris Lacey, our city attorney. That told me there was not enough evidence to do anything so my comment was well the only evidence we're at, well the next thing we were told was we have to catch him doing it the only way we're going to catch him doing it is whenever uh, somebody comes out there to pick up a dead child and i don't and you can I, that's absolutely the truth sir we've done everything we can do i went to the police department like i said three reports were made out of 24 visits to my house that letter that i just gave her is every single person on my street they all agree. We, we, I mean, we don't know what else to do. You and I spoke 
numerous ago. times. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Two or three times. It's a new, newer Camaro. No, it's an orange and white Camaro. With white strap. Yes, sir. Never? Yes, sir. Yeah, he does that on the interstate too. Yes, sir. Um, right now, I think the other day he did it. He did it so hard, um, which kind of a good thing. I think he blew part of it up because it was smoking. But he got out in front of our house, a neighbor across the street. He did it so loud. They have an infant that was asleep. Scared the baby. He flipped off on the floor. The dad come out and was fixing to do something really bad. You know, and I told him, I said, man, let, let's all, we, we're going to have to get together and do something. Was like I said, we went to the district or the attorney, whatever, I don't know what She's exactly he's called. And he said, well, there's not enough here. Well, the next thing is we're gonna be picking up a child. And that's sad that we pay money, we're tax paying just like everybody else. And we have to put up with this daily. It is every single day. There's not one day of rest. He, he does it deliberate. He'll come, you know, as soon as he hits that speed bump, he's hauling. Then he'll slow down and get right in front of your house because he does mine and my neighbor because he knows I've reported. Right. And he'll just sit there and put it neutral and rev it up. I know that's not illegal, but I mean, it's enough is enough. It's annoying. Absolutely. Well, the speeding is illegal. Right. You know, and we've been, and, and, and you know, I went down there and spoke with him, and I know an officer did not tell him that, but they told me that the officer told them if we're in the road, that's my problem. I don't think that's the law. No. But, you know, I when the snow and ice hit a couple weeks ago, I was trying to clean out my vehicle or clean out so I could get my vehicle out because I'm considered an essential worker. I had to go. Right. She got right beside me in the big red truck and gunned it and, and fishtailed, went in the ditch, almost hit my neighbor just because I was standing there trying to dig out my vehicle. That day I also made the phone call, but it was Lone Oak Sheriff and he just called me on the phone. He couldn't come down the street. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't know what else to do. So that's why I'm coming here. Because we've done every avenue that we were requested know, to do at this point. I know you and I talked about potentially you need to get an attorney. This is a civil. This is a civil matter. It's, it's not a civil matter when it's everyone on the street. I'm not going to pay for an attorney when we've got right there. I mean, everybody on my street is. You what, know what, what I want to tell you. With this, I'm going to have a conversation with our city attorney and our police chief and our lieutenant. We'll see if, what can be done if anything. But I will promise you, if there's anything that uh, Ford is going to do uh, right now, because I don't want to say attorney, now that's a legal matter, and I need to talk to him first. Mm -hmm. But uh, I appreciate you bringing this to our concerns at this level. City Council is aware of it. Uh, we will take a look at this. And, and um, you know, from a personal standpoint, I just hate you have to put up with a neighbor like him. Uh, yeah, I agree. And like I said, uh, and I don't mean I don't mean to sound outright, so don't take it that way. But everything you're telling me now, I've heard that 42 times. I know, I know you're, you're and it's getting me. to the point to I'm, I mean, yeah. I don't know how to say it. We are absolutely the, we're fed up. And, and I'll be honest, I'm not sure. You know, short, I mean, I've got short neighbors. of the, short, of, short of our police officers catch him in the act, I'm not sure what else can be done by the right. city. But I will talk to our city attorney about this and see where we can carry this, and I will get back. Did your number on him? It is not. Well, if you're right on there, don't fail. If you're right on there. I've been officially at more speed bumps. No, because when he gets to that speed bump, as soon as he goes over it, you know, like those little Hot Wheels yeah. cars, you put in that thing, that's what he does. Every and that, single and that is a problem with speed bumps. And when people ask for speed bumps, they sometimes create more problem than there is. He's, uh, he's gunning our children down. We're having to shove them in ditches full of water to keep them from being hit. Our first our three children, Greg right. and our kids, he, it's not just one, it's the entire family. They are swerving towards him, swerving towards the vehicle. He has submitted multiple yes, surveillance videos to the police, none of which are apparently documented, and I understand things happen. But, you know, this it, it's going to continue to the point that our kids are going to get murdered. Yes, and nothing yes. is getting done. And I cannot remake my kids. Like I said, I... I promise you I will get in touch with the city attorney and we'll have a discussion about this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, sir. I think one of the things we should look at is traffic calming ideas like they will bring one. Look up that stuff. That will slow them down. You turn mm -hmm. uh, you, you know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about, yes. I'm not sure. But let's uh let's discuss that with the city attorney first. Any other public comments? Okay, now we'll go to announcements. Ford District Amnesty Week is this week. If you have outstanding warrants, so turn yourself in. Now, start the clock all over again and give you a new court date. Not arrest you, and I'll take you to jail.
Planning Commission meeting is uh, March 22nd at 7. That City Council meeting is April 19th at 6.30. Citywide cleanup is April 24th from 8 to 3. I'd encourage council members to volunteer to help with that. Uh, just come on out and we'll put you to work, give you some gloves and a vest and let you do whatever. Uh, then the next Planning Commission meeting after that is April 26th. The annual fishing derby, May 15th at Buzz Lake. Fishing derby, uh, the 4th of July, Christmas parade, I can say those all on now. We've been through this for a year. We know how to act in crowds. Uh, if people get inoculated, should help matters. So we are planning on having the fishing derby. We are planning family 4th of July celebration. Unless the bottom just drops out and we get uh, you know, ordered by, by the governor to not do things like that, uh, it's my intention to have things like that because I think we need to get back to some semblance of normalcy. That's all I have for tonight. That is all on the agenda. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Well, motion. Second. Say, okay, that is what we have to say. All in favor say aye and, aye. and dismiss. Thank y'all for showing up. I'll give you a call. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't think